Lesson 32, Hearing the Words of Jesus. In today's lesson, we will learn how Jesus taught the people in parables to reveal truth to those ready to receive it, but to conceal it from others. We shall also witness the power of Jesus to still a storm at sea with just a word. Many are glad to hear the words of Jesus. Yes, the demons hear his voice and tremble in fear. The wind and the waves listen and obey. Even the dead respond to his voice. But are you hearing the words of Jesus? Jesus told the familiar parable of the sower sowing his seeds. He says the seed fell on different types of ground. Some was along the roadside, some in thorny patches, some in the rocks, and some on good soil. He then tells us how each type of soil reacted to the seed that was spread upon it. The roadside did not allow the seed to even penetrate into the ground, but the seed was snatched away by the birds. The rocky ground allowed the seed to germinate and grow, but because of a lack of roots and moisture it soon withered and died. The thorny patch also allowed the seed to grow, but choked it, and it was not able to produce anything. The good soil allowed the seed to take root, grow up strong, and produce plenty of fruit. If this was all we were told, we might be left wondering what Jesus meant by this illustration from farming. But then, he takes time to privately explain this parable to his disciples. He says the seed is the word of God, and the soil represents different kinds of people and their response to the word of God. Some have a hard heart, like the seed on the roadway, and the word cannot even penetrate into their hearts at all. The devil snatches away the word and they receive no benefit and no life from the word. The rocky ground allows the seed to grow, but the sun comes out and scorches the plant because it has no root. This is like those who hear the word, receive it, but when it begins to cost them some difficulties in the world, they quickly stumble. The seed that grew among the thorns was choked, is like those who hear the word, receive it, but the cares and concerns of life choke it and make it unfruitful. Lastly, the good soil that produced plenty of fruit is like those who hear the word, gladly receive it, and then produce much spiritual fruitfulness in their life. They are glad to shine forth their face so that the world can see that they have turned to Jesus and are bearing fruit for the kingdom of God. One evidence that someone is a child of God is that they produce plenty of fruit in the sense that they are willing to share the good news of salvation with many others. Jesus calls on his audience to hear what he is saying. The phrase, he who has ears let him hear, simply means to take in what has been told, understand and obey it, so that it may be to your benefit. Too many people simply do not take God's words seriously. They show up on Sunday and hear the preacher speaking, but they are not really listening deeply to what the Spirit of God is trying to reveal to them about themselves, about their sin, and their need to repent. It is very dangerous to be in a position where we can hear the Word of God being spoken, but we are not responding to it as we ought to. Jesus says that the measure in which we make use of what we have heard is the measure in which God can provide to us his revelation. As we tune out and fail to obey, the seed will be snatched away and we will lose even the things we once thought we possessed. God's word is not to be thought of as trivia or a suggestion or a controversy to debate. It is to be heard and obeyed and only then can it produce fruit in our lives. Jesus provides two other parables in this chapter, and though no explanation of the meaning is given, we can try to discern what Jesus wants to teach us. The first parable is about the mystery of growth. The seed is placed in the ground, and while the farmer is asleep, the seed sprouts and later produces fruit, until it is ready to be harvested. 
It appears that Jesus is telling us that in the kingdom of God, all new spiritual life finds its source in the invisible workings of God. People hear the word and God speaks into their hearts and causes them to place their faith in Jesus Christ for their only hope of reaching heaven. As this invisible power is working in the souls of men, bringing forth life, it is not apparent to the unbelieving world. They, like the farmer, are asleep while God is preparing for a great harvest of souls. When at last the time comes for the harvest, God will gather up all of his children to himself. The second parable Jesus shares is about the mustard seed. He tells us that though this is the smallest of seeds, it grows into a large plant and the birds of the air come to nest in it. In this parable, Jesus is making the point that though the seed seems so very small and insignificant, yet it does produce something of much greater size than one might expect. This is the nature of how the seed of faith planted in a believer's heart may seem at first rather small, yet it can grow to become great faith upon which others may find some rest and encouragement. If a young person comes to Christ, at first they are a babe in Christ and understand little, but in time their spiritual life can grow so that they become a teacher of the word and help others to find their way to Christ also. This may be what the Lord had in mind when he spoke of the birds coming to nest in the branches of the tree that started out as just a tiny seed. Jesus calms the wind and waves of a storm on the sea when traveling by boat with his disciples, and his disciples were amazed and frightened by the power Jesus displayed. The words of Jesus are not like the words of any other man or writer. Jesus had power in his words, not only to control the course of nature, but also to heal and give life. With such power in view, we also ought to have great fear and listen and obey the words of Jesus. And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Mark chapter 4 verse 41.